you know, sometimes it's your own energy that makes things difficult. And, and some of you can attest to this. Let's say you are going to read a really great book that you love, or you're going to meditate, or you're going to do something like this. And then something just doesn't let you do it. For instance, maybe your kids need your attention, or suddenly you don't feel well, you have a headache, or this happens, or you're, you're having technical issues. I, I will say we all we create everything and, and there's a part of us that the, the dark part of us that will create the chaos or the desire to do something else or the impulse to do something else to get you away from working on yourself and and it's kind of a I don't like to make it sound that way because when I, someone told me well you're the one causing all this chaos in your life. I actually was kind of bothered by that and it kind of scared me a little bit. I said, I'm doing this? Like, how am I doing this? Like, here I am thinking I'm sending love and light to everything. And back in the day when my whole life was just all silly and crazy, I'm just like, how am I doing that? So when I, there's a lot of things people would tell me back then that I didn't understand or didn't make sense to me. One other thing someone told me once was if you had too much light, your, your 3D body would just deteriorate. So you have to do it gradually. Again, that was something else like, how is that possible? Why would light deteriorate my body? So I didn't like the sounds of that either. And then there was a lot of other things people told me, oh, how do you know when you're like, when you when you got it all, like what, that, that you're better? Oh, when, you're, when your life is like, uh, your financials are good, your relationship's good and your health is good. And I started to cry because all of that was a mess. So you kind of hear these like things from what people are saying and you're taking them to heart and you're like oh my gosh I, I'm a bigger mess than I thought or I don't understand what's going on so we as human beings are going through this ascension process and it is by free will uh, you can actively do the work to get better which we're doing right we're here now let's say here I am I'm trying to get on a call I actively want to work on myself and my login is not working, my computer shuts down. And we get that sometimes on these calls, I get interference. Oh, great, she's in. Perfect, all right, welcome, Amanda. So sometimes we get interference that says, hey, no, you're not doing this today. Now, do you fight it? Do you continue trying? The best thing to do is reconnect with yourself. So if you're having a hard time with your computer or, or something, you, you need to do something but you just can't seem to get it done reconnect with you and that will bring you more connected to your light and you, things will go with more ease and flow so generally what i'll do first thing in the morning is i wake up and i put my for my right hand on my chest and a lot of people already see this because i have a video on it but i'm just going to do it right now because it's going to help everyone kind of calm down because there's a lot of energy here today and, and then some people are feeling anxious some people are worried some people are excited some people are just relaxed but if you take your right hand and put it on your chest and you're making slow circles to your left shoulder and you're taking a deep breath and i'll say an affirmation for everybody i deeply and profoundly love and accept myself with all my problems and limitations i'll usually say that affirmation three times there is something energetically that will actually balance you out just by doing that simple motion. Now, if you don't remember the affirmation, you can simply just do the motion and say, I love myself. I love myself. And sometimes I'll walk around if I'm feeling bothered and just say, you know what? I love myself. There's another one that I really like, and it's uh, crossing over the legs and, and the arms. And you're crossing over your ankles and you're taking some deep breaths that one balances really nicely as well and there's another one where you're kind of doing this like really exaggerated crossing over what i'll do when i send out the thank you for joining which i don't think i did last time i'll i'll send you the link to a video and they'll kind of walk you through the steps but when you get reconnected we have a lot of energy fields we're energetic beings but those will balance the up and down, the front and back and the left to right. Even if you have children that are having problems reading, 
focusing. Sometimes their energies are just a little bit off. So you may want to have them do those exercises, um, the, especially the one where they're doing the cross crawl, cross crawl um, hitting their knees. That can bring a lot of focus and help them read with better focus if they're you know getting distracted so you can kind of play with these and there's a lot of teachers that are bringing these things into the classroom even eft um the tapping like you know a tapping is very powerful when you first start tapping it's called eft or emotional freedom technique it is very top powerful it works but when you're new to it you think well i can't be doing this i'm just me but try it. And if you have something you're anxious about, angry about, and you're tapping through it, you're actually hitting acupuncture points or energy points. You're tapping out the energy. And you might actually go from feeling like a number 10, say number 10 is like you're really anxious and worried. It'll bring you down to about a six. And if you keep doing it, you do that again, it takes about two minutes to do the whole um, tapping process. And you want to do, there's a kind of a beginning, a middle, and an end, and the front and the end are the same, but the middle is different, and they're all very important. But if you do them, um, do tapping, you'll find that you might be now at a six or seven, you do it again, you might be at a three, you do it again, you might be at a zero, and letting all of that go. So the neat thing is, if you do that, and the more you use EFT, the more you use these balancing, you have energetic memory, just like muscle memory. So you're building up. We just don't jump into a gym and say, okay, I'm gonna go to the biggest weight and work out. You gradually work out, up, you know, up on weight. Just like that, when you start using energy work to balance yourself, it's you're gonna have a minimal effect, but then it's gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. So we all have the power to do this for ourselves. And what I love to do is empower people that you don't have to rely on someone like me or someone else. It's nice to come to these things and do things with us in the group. And I love you guys being here. But those times when you're not with us, you can do these on your own. So it's really something that's tangible, something that you can easily learn. And a neat thing with the EFT or tapping and even the other balancing, you can think of your family members. So say you have your daughter or your sons upstairs and they're like in a bad mood. As you balance yourself, think of them. They will also get the balancing and you can almost feel or hear their mood change, which is neat. I remember a long time ago, there was someone really angry in my house and I did tapping for me and that person. And all of a sudden that anger, all of a sudden they were like whistling and dancing to music. I'm just like, how is that possible? So I used to play with energy and all the techniques that I'd learn. I'd play it, you know, I, I would use it and, and try it on pets and try it on here. And I love to investigate and see. And he's like, this stuff is so powerful. And the intention, it has to be there. It's all about intention. So if I believe, know, and trust, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. But how do you get to the believe, know, and trust? So there's some people may they may be in an illness and they think I'm never going to get out of it because when you're in an illness and it hurts and you're not feeling good, you don't see an end to it and you think this is my life and you just kind of say, okay, this is it. I, I, that's that's just the way it is. But if you woke up every morning and said every day I'm going to get better and better, and just allow the process of your cells getting better because every cell is conscious every cell is listening so if you're sending messages to your body that i'm healthy i'm strong it's going to listen and yes it might be gradual right it might be gradual we have lots of resistance to get through but just keep chipping away another really powerful thing that you can do in this new energy that we're in is affirmations affirmations are so powerful Back in the day, I used to say affirmations in my head a lot. Actually, I had sticky notes. I had things in my pocket that I would read them. And I just, today is going to be a great day. I am a magnificent being. I am wonderful, kind. And, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a great day. Great. Yeah, whatever. But I just kept saying it. And it eventually becomes a belief. Because all a belief is, is a thought you say over and over. 
So as you say affirmations, you're giving instructions to the universe, you're giving instructions to yourself that this is the way it's going to be. Then you start to slowly see your world change. And when you start to see even just a subtle change in your life, maybe you have less pain, maybe you're sleeping better, maybe relationships are slowly getting better, you're happier, more peace inside, be thankful and appreciate it. The state of appreciation by saying thank you, you can call it God, it's, it's God's source, you can say thank you universe, thank you angels, thank you light. I'm seeing a change in my life. I'm sleeping better. I have less worry. Today, I had 10 minutes where my mind was not worrying, whereas before it be 24 seven. That's a blessing. Be thankful for that because when you start to notice, the universe will say, oh my gosh, she's noticing. Let's give her more. And you start getting more into this more positive back and forth. So I love affirmations. I think in this new energy, my belief is, and I resonate with, saying it out loud is more powerful in the new energy. And that is, I believe, it is our mind and our spirit or our soul melding together. So it's almost like you're speaking it out loud so everything hears, especially your mind, you're, you're hearing it through your ears, you're feeling it through your vibration that yes, I'm feeling better, I'm, 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 every day's working out, so and so are getting along, my house is full of love, joy and happiness. That is a big one. I got out of a really bad situation just by saying every day, probably a hundred times a day, this house is full of love, joy and happiness. And what I found is most people actually came into that place of joy, happiness and love and harmony. The person that couldn't, you know, you leave it open. Hopefully everybody will jump into that and we all be able to work together. And But if that person's energy is not ready, they may actually just leave the situation in a really easy way. So the house is love, joy, happiness, and harmony. That person may have left, but wow, it's a lot lighter now that they left. And when they leave, it's not like it's making a big scene. The, the universe just kind of takes them out in the way that they're meant to leave. So it's quite beautiful how we do have the power to create our circumstances, our lives. You want to stay in your light. Even when you're in a situation where you're in a home with perhaps someone who's grumpy, someone who's not spiritual, someone who's ill and in pain, someone who, you know, you're arguing with, you want to hold your light. And it's great practice to try your best every day to hold your alignment in those situations. So you can almost say those people are your best teachers. I was able to hold my light with all this stuff going on. Now, when I say that, it didn't happen right away. It was, let me try this. I'm going to practice this for 15 minutes a day. I'm going to hold how much light I can, even though this situation I'm in kind of sucks. But I can choose either to be a victim or I can choose to be a co-creator of my life. And I choose to be a co-creator. I'm going to create my life to the best of my ability. Some days are better than others. But when you wake up in the morning and you set that intention and you set that compassion and tolerance and patience for everyone around you, you're setting a tone to really allow for ease and flow. Instead of waking up and saying, oh, today's going to suck so-and-so's here or this or he's cranky or this is happening or she's cranky or, oh no this is happening and take that deep breath you connect you do those exercises and is i'm gonna have a brilliant day today and i i like to use the word brilliant malevolent marvelous fabulous i just use all the words you may want to put sticky notes all over your house and you know i get it if you live in a family and they see sticky notes everywhere they might just think oh no She's lost it again, but there's got to be some place in your house that's yours that you can put sticky notes. Maybe your walk-in closet. Maybe that's where you keep your clothes. And when you open up, you see sticky. I'm marvelous. Things are working out for me. Life is beautiful. It's just magnificent to be here. 
or perhaps on your computer have a sticky notes so when you go sit at your computer you remember if you live alone sometimes it's a blessing because you can put them all over your house um and whenever you see it just like oh yeah i remember and say it every time you say it, say it out loud i would have a beautiful day not only are you putting out positive energy for yourself not only are you putting out words to the universe that are listening you're also adding positivity to this beautiful world. Another practice I've been using, and another one is when we're doing this in these calls, is we're sending out love to this beautiful earth. So it's to the land, to the air, to the sky, to the water. Um, I'm asking for actually a bit of rain because we're, we're having a little bit of less rain and I have to water everything and it's like, okay, a little bit of rain would be nice. I heard Mississauga and Oakville had some rain. I said, wouldn't it be nice if it came here for an hour or just water and then went away? But we weren't so lucky. But, you know, in essence, this beautiful world is something that gives us life. And as we heal, we heal planet Earth. As she heals, we get healed. So when someone says, oh, you know, why do I even bother working on myself? It's so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Now, how many people, I said, I'm going to go to a gallery. How many people are finding whatever they're going through a little more exaggeratedly harder than usual? You know, I just like, is, do, you, do you notice that? Because like, there's so, yeah, it's just, Things are more exaggerated because we are in accelerated time. With that accelerated time, we are manifesting faster than ever before. So if I think, actually, I manifest so quickly that if I woke up saying a negative thought, I will see something bad happen in the next hour or two. So I have learned very, very very, very well through my lessons that I must keep my thoughts very high. If a negative thought comes in, I say 20 positive thoughts to kind of null and void it. Although I think I only have to say one and maybe I don't have to say any, but I'm just, it's the kind of a game I play. I watch every thought, every action. And someone said, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, we're, we're releasing so much. The power of healings has been phenomenal on this planet like i'm watching people come in the amount of dark dense energy lifting out of a session and light coming in it's like whoa i'm getting exhausted i'm eating like a monster after a session there's so much energy that's going into healing from both sides so when you're going through something realize that you're releasing and as you're releasing really stay connected and do your best to meditate, take quiet time, write down affirmations. I going to get through this. I am loved, I am powerful. This is not a forever state we're in. It is this up and down state we are going through. I get that, it's uncomfortable, I get that. But I always tell people, the more crap you're releasing, I believe it's because you're just this powerful, magnificent being with this heavy, beautiful mission to help humanity. And if you are hurting right now, <clears throat> it, it will, it will pass. It will pass. If you ever need <clears throat> a personal chat, I have no problems having a quick call with someone. If they're really in the thing, usually it's just stuck energy. We just got to move it through and then <clears throat> that will pass. Now, not to say it's gone. It's that layer is gone. Yeah. But next, the next one's going to come up and we heal like that. So we can have these really rough times and great times and, oh, life is so beautiful. And then life is so heavy and life is so beautiful and life is so heavy. And we all go through that. Or why am I even here? How many times have I asked that over the years? All right, I'm done. Take me off the planet. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And then four days later, like, oh my gosh, everything's so beautiful. I'm glad I didn't leave. So. I don't ask to leave anymore because I realize the ups and downs are just part of being human. That no matter who you are, we all have our, our own lessons to go through. If you're not sure what your lesson is, look around your life, look around you, go in inside and say, just ask your higher self, what are my lessons? What is my karma that I have to release? What is it? And you'll kind of get an idea just based on 
the repetitions in your life, the circumstances in your life, and you can kind of get an idea. Some people can articulate so beautifully what their lessons are on this planet. It's like, wow, you know it. So just like keep releasing it, keep releasing it. If there's a root to it, yeah, you'll get to it. But in this new energy, everybody can release karma, can release karmic loops, can let go of that darkness within them. Never give up on yourself. Just do the work. I always say, I'm ready to break my karmic loops. I'm ready to break my ties with anything that no longer serves me. I'm ready to let go of dark interference. Now, it doesn't mean that dark interference stops and my life is all la la land. Although sometimes people think my life is all la la land. I'm still human. I still go through those things. I just better adapted to deal with it. I can laugh it off and say, oh, great. Something's coming at me yet again. All right. This is, uh, I'm going to take it as a compliment that the dark likes to come pick on me or whoever, you know, it's, it has nothing better to do. Dark energy is just energy that lost its way. It's not scary. It wants to think it's scary and big and whatever. It's not smart. It likes to think it's smart and it likes to do things that makes, make, we, we think it's smart. Yes, it knows our weaknesses. Yes, it knows our thoughts. And that's what it picks on. So if my weakness is ABC, then it's going to give me thoughts of ABC to trigger me, to trigger me, to trigger me. And then it's going to pick on you, what you, what your thing is. So your X, Y, Z, that bothers you. So you're going to get thoughts of that. Dark energy is intelligent in some ways, but then it's not because it always does the same kind of thing. It tries this. That didn't work. I'll try this. That didn't work. I'll try this. That didn't work. I'll try this. It's kind of like, okay, you know what? That's all you know. Dark energy only knows how to replicate itself. That's all it's there for. An example that I've used in the past, if you have an abandonment issue, the, 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 what happens is we splinter off. That trauma splinters off. So now here I am with this abandonment issue. Okay, it happened at age four. I didn't know where my parents were. I'm all freaked out. Something really sad happened. That energy pattern, me of age four, is replaying, is replaying, is replaying. Abandonment, abandonment, fear, fear, fear. All it wants to do is replicate itself. So here I am, a grown woman, and this thing keeps, I can feel it. I feel this abandonment. I'm scared my partner's going to leave. I'm scared my kids are going to leave. I'm scared, you know, I'm going to be all alone. Like, why am I feeling that? It makes no sense. Because that part of me, that splinter, is replaying, replaying, replaying. The dark energy knows that's my weakness. So it keeps putting stuff in me. You're going to be alone. You're going to be alone. And that's the, I'm just giving you an example of how someone can be in a cycle of worry of the same thing over and over. So that's your pattern that you can work on. So what you can do is simply say, higher self, my soul, I know you love me so much. And I know in this energy, I can heal. I have a deep fear of abandonment. I feel it at the, in my bones. I would like to work on that. And what is going to happen? It's going to lift off whatever you no longer need, but the lessons you need to lead. Oh, you can't hear me. Can anyone hear me anymore? Um, the lessons that need to, to stay are going to stay, are going to stay until you meet them. So even when you do um, an energy lesson, uh, sorry, an energy healing, oh, I'm just gonna ask her, I'm gonna ask everyone. Okay, so someone can hear me, okay, thank you. Sorry, Maria. Uh, Maria, I don't know why you can't hear me by having trouble. Okay. All right. It's, you know, let's just clear some of the energy. We'll send in some good intentions, let this all flow and everyone can hear and it's all good. So I kind of lost my train of thought, but what I think I'm trying to say is no matter what you are going through, ask to release as much as you can, but the lessons that you need to learn nobody is going to be able to take that away from you you can spend lots of money going to the best healers out there and they're going to say okay i don't want to offend any healers out there but they're going to say yeah i'll wipe it all away for you you'll be great and i actually had a client and i'm going to give actually i'm going to give this little story because 
you know, when we're not well, and we want to get well so desperately, we'll do sometimes whatever we can. So this gentleman went to went to a healer who said, I'm going to work on you for six hours for $1,500. And all of your stuff is going to be gone. So he's like, Oh, yeah, $1,500. That's amazing. So you know, they have a session, a really long session, he's exhausted, sleeps for a few days, and he felt better. And then it came back. Why did it come back? Because now the next layer is there, right? So he goes back to this lady and she goes, Oh, it's not all gone. It's still there. And uh, she says, Oh, it's because you didn't drink enough water. We're gonna have to do it again. I need another $1,500. And they do it yet again. And you know, again, the clearing happens because the layer is gone and that's what's ready to release because your soul is in charge of what's releasing in a session. So then the third time he's like, you know, it's still not gone and uh, apparently he did something else that was wrong and uh, he yet paid another $1,500 to this lady and <laughs> by his third time, you know, he realized that this lady's either not telling the truth or something's up we want trust me if we had magic wands we'd, we'd make it all go away and humanity be all happiness and joy and, and all that great we all want that right and and i would love that for everyone but the truth of the matter is we heal in layers it's like gra it's gradual there's discernment that's learned over the years. So when I go into meditation, I, I've been doing this for 13 years. I do work on myself every day. I learn something new every day. Like, I don't know how, but it's like, oh my gosh. It's sometimes when I work on a session with someone, I learn about something new or, or vice versa. I'm just learning because I read. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I'm hearing it this way. What you want to do is learn at your own pace. Heal at your own pace but have patience and tolerance and love for yourself and say, Hey, you know what? Today I, I released something and it felt good. Enjoy those times where you feel light and elated, but don't get discouraged when that next layer of crappy feelings comes up because it's coming up as a blessing. It's coming up for another release and you can ask your, your soul to help you get through it. You can meditate through it. You can have an energy session, you can walk in a labyrinth, you can go ground yourself, lay on earth and ask your angels, go to sleep with your hands on your chest and say, just, you know, release this layer, just do whatever you can, but just know that in that layer as it's healing, it's a little uncomfortable and it might release and you'll get another one. Tapping actually will help release um, a layer as well. It might be a smaller layer, um we can self-heal i really believe that when i do eft or tapping on myself i know i'm releasing something but if i were to do beam on myself it's like doing an eft to myself the only reason i go to another healer and i do because if there's something big there i need someone to hold the space for me while i'm in it because i can't hold the space for myself and let go at the same time to the extent that i want to so when i give my my trust to another healer and say okay please hold this space for me and we can co create a healing then that i just get a bigger release but it's not needed you can do this on your own these sessions themselves the group sessions why i love them so much is we do get healing from them um, a lot of energy is released a lot of energy then comes back you want to bring it back allow it and then we send this beautiful energy to mother earth and that is the key that I love so much because that healing that's being sent transcends and keeps going and it just keeps it's out there for everyone and everything that needs it so it's quite beautiful and whatever we bless blesses us back so we're getting this like extra healing coming our way so the group sessions are beautiful individual sessions are beautiful whatever you can do for yourself just do something every single day and if it's just affirmations say them loud say them strong and and the more you start to believe them the power more powerful they'll be i can talk all day there's so much i have to say or want to say but we're going to just let my thoughts simmer down 
we're going to get into the healing or else we'll be talking all night. Um, one thing I would like you guys to think about, and um, this is just kind of keep this in and either email me or let me know. I was thinking of doing a retreat day and I haven't done any this year because I've just been busy with other things. If anyone's interested in coming down for a retreat, it'll be affordable, it'll be fun, but they're pretty powerful. Uh, at the end of the day, when everyone goes home, I'm actually kind of worn out. Sometimes I, you know, I have to do some purging of my own to get every, all the, uh, the energy out. They're a lot for me, but if people are interested, I will do them. Because they, we kind of go, we go into deep patterns. We do a lot of work. Um, I haven't put anything out there because I just thought, oh, there's so much energy out there. I don't know. Maybe it's too, it's going to be too intense in person. But I think it could be a fun thing. If anyone's interested, let me know. I might just put one out there and see how it goes. If you feel called to it, let me know. and We can uh, put one together. Okay. Now let's get into the fun, fun stuff of the healing, the, uh, okay, maybe in July. Okay, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put something kind of in the future so we can kind of, I'll maybe we'd have two dates and we'll throw something together and see if people are interested. They're very powerful. We had a few last year and uh, like I said, I really had to recover from them, but uh, we, had a, we had a good time. All right. So get comfortable. For those of you who are new, you're just getting comfortable. You can lay down, sit down, keep your eyes closed, keep them open. Personally, I just like to let go during these things and lay down and I usually pass out when I'm on the receiving end of them. I'm going to stay more alert because I'm actually uh, facilitating and I don't wanna drift off too far away. So I'll stay, allow the energy to come through everyone's going to get what they receive. They are very safe because you're all in your own octahedrons of love. Although we're kind of doing this together, we're in our own silos. These beautiful beings of light that come in know exactly what you need and they work with your soul. Your higher self is in charge of your healing. So you want to get into a place of allowance. And how do you do that? Just simply say, I allow this healing at an emotional level, a mental level, a physical level. I may not know what I'm ready or need to release today, but that's okay because I'm handing it over to these beings of light that love us so much. We're gonna start the music and I'm feeling extremely lightheaded. The energy is already coming through. So let's start this music and let's get this started. So beautiful, here we go. Whew. All right, we're going uh, into my favorite right away. I'm going to share the sound. Uh, this is where I, I need a tech person. One day, one day I'll have one. One second every month. The energy's already flowing. I'm just trying to balance the music. Give me a thumbs up if you can still hear that. The music really loud lightly in the background. It's not too overwhelming this time. Okay, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Maybe I'm finally mastered this. Wow. Okay. All right, guys. Yes. I'm not a techie, but maybe I'm getting better. All right. Everyone, I just want you to relax and allow a deep breath. And I'm not going to tell you how to breathe. Just breathe deeply in what feels comfortable to you. And as you're breathing in, just ask that energy to move into any part of your body you're either feeling tension or stress in. And feel free to move around because like when energy comes through, you just may feel like I need to move and that's completely okay. Allow you to just in this allowing state. And what's happening during this beautiful day, it's already been happening since we started, we're getting an energetic balance of our chakras and our meridian system and our auric fields are being cleared away from any interference. Love. 
sadness or arguments we're lifting away that dense energy out of your home is leaving the earth plane and we're replacing it with master light and as a master light fills your entire home it's going to feel lighter brighter calmer much more peace we're sending this to all the loved ones in your whether they're on the call or not, this loving energy is being made available to them at this time. This includes your pets and your plates.
start wiggling your toes, your fingers, your body, if you want to get out of the meditative state. Otherwise, you can just stay in it. There's no right or wrong. I'm just shutting off the music. I'm going to use the singing bowl now. With the singing bowl, it may not sound perfect as it comes through, but the intention and it still works the same. But it's just helping you process any last minute energy so you can get more of a peaceful sleep instead of staying in it. And it's also going to bring some more grounding because you might be dizzy and I'll kind of get that dizziness away. I was really dizzy during that. At one point, I just felt like I was like totally not grounded at all. All right, I'm just going to play this and then we can chat a minute. So thank you all for joining.